Hi everyone, hope you all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. And in this video, I'm going to discuss about Azure Arc for servers. If you're watching this series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about Azure Arc. What is the core idea behind using this service? Whereas in this video, I'm going to talk about what is Azure Arc enabled for servers? What are the supported cloud operations? supported platforms, network requirements, and my top five recommendation for deployment guidelines. To begin with, let's understand what is Azure Arc for servers from a definition perspective. With Azure Arc for servers, you can onboard your physical or virtual machines in your on-prem environment or VMs running in other cloud platforms to Azure and all these onboarded resources will be treated as a dedicated Azure resource, which typically means an ARM resource. I mean, every resource will have a resource ID. You can group them into resource groups and whatnot, the basic construct of Azure. Now, just a small visual difference because it is important. The first icon on the left is Azure Arc as a service. The second icon is Azure VM, and the third one is Azure Arc onboarded servers. Now let's talk about the process that you have to follow in terms of onboarding the servers from other solutions to Azure, which is basically an onboarding process at a very high level. Now it is exceptionally simple because all you have to do is you have to install an Azure Arc client on the servers. And then there are certain endpoints which these agents must be able to communicate. And that's it. Your servers will be onboarded to Azure and that too as a resource. Then you can use the different controls which Azure Arc has to offer for a specific set of resource type in our case, which is servers. So if you talk about how the machines will get listed, I mean, this is something which I have covered in the last video, but just a quick recap. It's the same inventory page of resources. You can log into Azure portal, click on resources and just apply a filter of let's say VM and Azure Arc servers, and then all the AWS, GCP, and on-prem onboarded servers will start getting listed on the console. Now, let's say you have done the onboarding. That means you have installed the Azure Arc agent. Let's talk about the services or the cloud operations which are offered, okay? Now, I'm saying this services, but you can go by the official documentation. Over there, it is listed as cloud operations supported by Azure Arc for servers, okay? So the first one is deployment of extensions. The image at the extreme left lists down the set of extensions that can be deployed to an Azure Arc machine, a machine that you have onboarded from your on-prem GCP or AWS platform. Now let's talk about how the exact workflow will be, okay? So as an admin, I can go to portal.azure.com and imagine a scenario wherein I have to deploy a script, okay? I can select the first option, then this extension will get mapped to Azure Arc resource, and then the respective script will be deployed on the actual VM, which either exists on your on-prem AWS or GCP, right? Now, the same extension tab can also be used to deploy log analytics agent and the workflow remains same. That means you can choose any of these three options. Then the respective extension will get mapped to Azure Arc resource and the same will be deployed to your Azure Arc onboarded machine. Now, the installation or deployment of extension on Azure Arc onboarded machines is possible because of an extension service that gets created while the installation of Azure Arc agent is happening on that particular machine. Okay, now I'm going to cover these services in a lot more detail, but just keep this as a reference point for this particular video. The next service which is available is onboarding of Azure Arc machine to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. 
Now, for those of you who have certain understanding of Microsoft Defender for Cloud, it's been known that in order to capture certain telemetry from a machine, a log analytics agent is required. So you can take a step back of the same process that we have discovered or we have discussed, and that is all the admin has to do is while deploying a log analytics agent from extension, they can just provide the workspace detail for Microsoft Defender for Cloud, and that's it. Machine will start reporting the telemetry to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Now, once the onboarding is completed, Microsoft Defender for Cloud console can be used to manage the security recommendations for these servers. Now, in this case, obviously there will be a charge of using Microsoft Defender for Cloud service. Now, the workflow remains same when you want to use Sentinel as well. So likewise, we have a log analytics workspace that can report data to MDFC, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Similarly, a log analytics agent installed on a machine can send telemetry to log analytics workspace, which is used by Sentinel. So in this case, while deploying a log analytics workspace, all the admin has to do is to provide the workspace information of Sentinel while deploying the log analytics agent. It's that simple. Now, the last one is the process of scoping policies, which means you can also scope Azure policies to these resources so that you can actually perform the cloud security posture management activities. I mean, checking compliance, you know, adhering to certain standards and whatnot. Apart from all these services, which I have mentioned, you can also use Azure Monitor as it is a cloud operation that is supported by this particular service, which is Azure Arc for servers. Let me just switch to my browser and show you the current list of the official documentation, which is available. And I will be sharing this link in the description so you can go ahead and review this documentation as well. So what you see now is one of my browser where I have just searched for Azure Arc for servers. And as you can see, this is the list which is listing down all the capabilities which are available. Now, the next part is the list of supported operating system. From Windows perspective, anything which is above 2008 R2 SP1 is supported. And then you have a complete list of different Linux servers which are supported for now. Now, there is one more very important aspect from Windows as a platform perspective, and that is you have to make sure .NET Framework 4.6 or later is installed already, and your PowerShell should be 5.1 or above. I mean, it is mentioned over here as Windows PowerShell 5.1 is required, but you can keep this or any version above than this. Now, these are the list of the URLs which are used by Azure Arc specifically. Now, for all obvious reasons, I always recommend that when it comes to network, please read the of official documentation on your own, because this is the kind of information which gets periodically changed. But let's say for a couple of months now, this has not been changed. So I thought of just including this particular list. But again, there is one more very important aspect, which is moreover related to network, and that is these lists or this list that you see right now for different URLs is only Azure Arc service URLs. So let's say in case where you want to use other services like MDFC or Sentinel, make sure you have whitelisted the URLs, which are specifically required for log analytics agent to work on a specific machine. Okay. Now, Based on one of my observation, I would suggest you to whitelist these two URLs as well, as there is a redirect which has been configured. And I will be explaining that in a lot more detail when we'll proceed with the installation of Azure Arc Agent. And these are those two URLs, which is aka.ms forward slash AZCMA agent and aka.ms forward slash AZCM agent hyphen windows. The first one is for Linux. The other one is for Windows. Lastly, a sort of deployment plan to get this rolled out. For all obvious reasons, you will plan a pilot rollout first, and then you may want to roll out this feature for your production environment based on the inventory, I mean, that you have, right? So here are my top five recommendations to begin with. 
since it is azure it is always you know uh, the first priority to make sure that you have the right set of roles assigned to different individuals now what roles are required this is something which i will be covering in the next video but make sure that you have assigned the right roles then make sure that you create a dedicated resource group for onboarding of azure arc machines or servers if you want you can have multiple resource groups or if you want you can use just one to monitor it end to end make sure that you apply tags it's a very basic step in terms of making sure the administrative process remains easy as well as you can apply filters customize query get customized insights and what not then make sure that you define scopes in terms of what all cloud operations or services you are actually going to use and you will test them right then you have to make sure that you have a different log analytics workspace all together so that you can go ahead and capture the information let's say if you are going with mdfc or sentinel if it is currently rolled out in your environment already for some other service make sure you create a different workspace get that onboarded to sentinel or get that onboarded to mdfc and then capture the logs for these azure arc onboarded servers to have a difference in terms of telemetry or insights or what kind of information you are getting and lastly make sure that you have a policy onboarded or a standard onboarded so that you can go ahead and check the insights of what exactly uh all these servers are showing and on behalf of which you can decide a compliance state for these servers so this was all about knowing the basic things that you must know before you go ahead with the rollout so let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video we have discussed about azure arc enabled for servers what are the basic prerequisites when it comes to supported platforms network requirements what are the cloud operations which are supported in the next video we are going to start off with onboarding servers to azure arc now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time